Live from the Civic Media World Headquarters in Madison, Wisconsin, it's the Todd Alba Show. And now, pursuing truth wherever it may lead, here's your host, Todd Alba. Across Wisconsin on the Civic Media Radio Network and streaming worldwide on the Civic Media app. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Todd Alba, along with the outstanding Mr. Aaron Zommers on the board. It is Thursday, December 14th, 2023, six minutes now past the hour of one o'clock. Thanks for joining us on a Thursday afternoon. Welcome in to hour two of the big program. Again, happy last night of Hanukkah, the menorah on the table behind me there, if you're watching on the stream. And we send blessings and greetings and best wishes to all of our friends celebrating Hanukkah, great holiday, great fantastic holiday. Yeah, I haven't. I've never celebrated it myself, but um, well, again, I'm, I'm not. Yes, I'm not. I'm not personally of the Jewish faith, but right. um, I have several friends who are. Yes, same here. And uh, I, I think it's fantastic. It's a joyous week of celebration. And I will say, any Jewish celebrations I have attended with these friends that I've been invited to have been fantastic yes. and uh, amazing food, amazing yeah. friendship. It, it's just great. Yeah. No, it's a uh, fan. You're, a, as as my friends would say, Mr. Zomers, you're a mensch. There you go. A little, little sure, Yiddish for go. you. A little Yiddish for you. Yeah. <laughs> I, I've picked up some Yiddish over the years from my, fr- my, my Jewish friends, which I love. I wish I, I, I'm jealous is what it comes down to because, you know, in, in, in Christian circles, we just don't have that, that kind of a second language. And so I'm eternally jealous of my friends that do have the Yiddish background of the Jewish you could, background. You could learn Latin and get a really old Bible. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes, I could. Or learn I'm like just, ancient I'm just, Greek and I'm just not that ambitious. translate it yourself. All right. <laughs> Mr. Zomer is always with the insightful comments. You're, and you're yeah, not very, wrong. Very helpful for sure. Well, you're not wrong. You're not wrong. Coming up in this hour, uh, we are going to uh, talk to the great John Ar- uh, Adius. John is the voice of the Wisconsin Badger volleyball play-by-play team and are the voice of the, ba- uh, of the Badgers. He is going to be live with us from Tampa, Florida. Beautiful, sunny Tampa, by the way. That is where the first game of the Final Four for the women's volleyball is underway. Division One NCAA tonight. The Badgers take on the Longhorns of Texas, the defending national champions. So uh, looking forward to that. Uh, game time, somewhere around 8.30-ish, it's going to be uh, Nebraska, the evil Nebraska Cornhuskers. <laughs> I say that just because I'm not a Nebraska fan. Uh, Nebraska taking on Penn in game one, and then uh, when when that's over, it'll be the Badgers uh, taking on Texas, and uh, John will have that play-by-play. And again, we don't normally do this, but it's, it's a big statewide uh, type of deal. Uh, John will be calling that game on 1070 AM here locally in the Madison market and across iHeartRadio if you want to tune in to John's call tonight of the uh, of the Lady Badgers. And of course, preceding that, you can keep it right here at Civic Media because earlier in the evening, this is so big, Mr. Zomers, the Final Four is so big, as well it should be, for the women's volleyball team, that the Badger men's basketball game was moved up an hour. Oh, okay. You know what? I, I'm very happy about that. Yeah, me too. That, so you, you can watch all your Badgers. And again, if you're watching on the stream, I have my Wisconsin gear on. Uh, you can you can listen to the Badgers on Civic Media's app starting a tip-off at 6 p.m. Pre-game show a little bit before that. You can listen over the air in places like Richland Center, Racine, Kenosha, Wisconsin Rapids, and Amory. But you can also listen to that game on the Civic Media app. Download it to your Apple or Android device and then just click on one of those stations. I prefer, of course, WRCE and Richland Center, but that's my home station. So what what am I going to say? Anyway, but you can listen to the great call by Matt LaPay and the Badger men taking on Jacksonville State. At the Kohl Center, trying to get back on the winning streak after that tough loss on the road to Arizona. And you can hear that right here on Civic Media App. Men's basketball tip-off time, 6 p.m., an hour earlier than the schedule says. And then you can listen to John on, uh, you know, on the line as well with Badger Volleyball's Final Four. Also joining us at 20 after and then staying with us for the rest of the hour is our very own Terry Bell. Of course, he's our civic media news director. You hear him at the top and bottom of every hour with those great news reports. But did you know that Terry Bell is also a Badger volleyball fan? In fact, a season ticket holder. And he is a certified, trained 
NCAA Division I Women's Volleyball Official. And Terry's going to be joining us uh, as well, talking all things women's volleyball and taking your calls as well. I know Terry does news, but maybe we can get him to do some play-by-play. Ooh. I wonder if he has. We'll ask him that. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know if he's done that before. I, uh, during my time at uh, WRCO, WRCE, and also down at the great student station, WSUP in Platteville, I did a little play-by-play. In fact, I did volleyball for a while. But here's the thing. As a guy who got diagnosed in college with dyslexia, I don't do well on play-by-play because it's the numbers get all messed up in my head. And, and you know and, what? That's very fair. And so I do much better. So I, I did play-by-play uh, for volleyball, for wrestling. Wrestling's easier because there's only two guys. Yeah, that's <laughs> so true. That's, that's not such a big deal. Uh, and then I also did a little uh, play-by-play on on baseball and and women's softball. But again, a slower game. So that, that I did better at that. And then I did a couple of women's basketball games, which and and a little football, which not. I was going to say, I'm sure not, at that point that not, was rough. Not not great on play by play. But my calling was the the color commentator. So I'm I'm much better as the analyst and the guy who makes up jokes and just moves the conversation right, right. along than I was Kevin O'Connor, my longtime former uh, broadcasting partner, the great Kevin O'Connor who now is down at Milwaukee, uh, that dude could work for ESPN. I mean, just pff, fantastically talented. It's it's a real talent to do play-by-play. John Audius does it fantastically, so we'll talk to him here about 20 after. Uh, I have a question. So I've, yes. I've never had the pleasure of listening to radio coverage of wrestling. What does that sound like? It's just like, oh, uh, John grabs Kevin. <laughs> oh, Kevin grabs John. There's a lot of grabbing going on here. <laughs> Clearly, you never grew up in a wrestling household. No, no, I did not. No, I, I know it's more complicated than that, and I know there's it's certain not moves. It's grabbing. It's just there funny are, to think about it there, like that. But my dad was a wrestling coach for 40-whatever years and officiated, so I grew up with it. And it's a very complex sport because there are, you know, you ever heard like Full Nelson, Half Nelson, Spladel, uh, Fireman's Carry? Is Spladel anything like splooting? <laughs> Actually... It kind of is a little bit. Oh, my gosh. Um, but, yeah, so, I mean, there there are these moves in wrestling, and the key is what's magical about wrestling, if you see it done well, is a person. Now you have to say person because for years it was a guy's sport. Now it's a, there are women's sports as well. But uh, a wrestler who really knows and practices these moves, it's, it's a little bit like mixed martial arts. It gets a little bit of jujitsu. So you kind of have to, like, you have to anticipate what your po- opponent may do and then stop that. Right. But then take that, take that, that bodily force and carry that, that, that energy and try to propel it against your opponent. It's a very specific type of duel. Well, there you go. They're called dual meets. That makes sense. In in dual meet, dual meet wrestling. So yeah. So when you're calling wrestling, you know it's you know Smith on top now tries to play it, swipes the right arm. Now he's on his back. Now you know it's calling like that. So you have, you have to know the moves to describe that over radio. And people who listen to it that know wrestling know exactly what you're talking about. That makes sense. Just <laughs> having not heard it before, it was interesting to think about uh, as somebody who knows next to nothing about wrestling. <laughs> Mr. Zomers on the wrestling play-by-play. Bob grabs Luke. Luke grabs Bob. There's a lot of grabbing going on at the mat. Yep, yep, indeed. <laughs> that is not what wrestling play-by-play is all about. But thank you very much for asking. I'm there sure that go. I'm sure there are a lot of people out there that think you're just like you never went to a wrestling match. Now I've learned something today. It's a great sport. And here's a hitherto unknown fact, as my eighth grade social studies teacher, Ken Lewis, is fond of saying. Hitherto unknown fact. Did you know that Luke Fickle, the head coach of the Wisconsin Badger football team, was a, I believe, four time state wrestling champion in high school? I. I feel like I remember hearing something about him being involved in wrestling, and I didn't remember exactly yeah. what, but it's probably because you said it, I think. Yeah. So Luke Fickle, a wrestler, and of course, he's good friends with Chris Bono, the uh, the coach of the Badger uh, wrestling team as well. And and in fact, uh, you know, there are other, lots of other uh, athletes also wrestled in high school because it's, it's not just the strength. I think it's the mental part of anticipating what your opponent might do and then knowing those plays. Yeah, I think there's so much cross pollination between yeah. sports and dancing and all of that that it's 
so valuable to Bra- have. Braylon Allen, the great running yeah. back who is uh, going into the NFL now, but Braylon Allen was also a, a, a big wrestler in high school. So, yeah, a shout out to all those Wisconsin high school wrestlers. An exciting sport. Maybe we'll take it. Maybe we'll go to a Badger wrestling match and, and, and cover that with you, Mr. Zombers. Yeah, and I'll have to listen to the radio version of it too so I can really. I, that's a great question. I'm not sure if Badger wrestling is on the radio. Terry Bell, do you know? Hey. I do not believe they are, no. All right. Terry yeah. Bell is just uh, brought, uh, coming to our studios here. He's going to be joining us here in a couple of minutes. But uh, maybe maybe that's a new calling for us. Maybe Civic Media could do Badger wrestling. Maybe we could. Add another that's actually thing not a to, bad uh, idea. Add another thing to Phil Knee's plate or something. <laughs> now, Phil Knee is called wrestling. You know who is the best at it? Uh, longtime owner and station manager Ron Fruit in Richland Center. Ah. In fact, he won a Wisconsin Wrestling Coaches Award for best coverage of wrestling. And <laughs> I was also on there. <laughs> and, and it wasn't so much Todd winning the award. It was the fact that I happened to be on a few broadcasts with Ron. I, I literally, that is the definition of coattails. <laughs> just, you know, just happy, happening to be in the same place at the same time. <laughs> so anyway, um, so yeah, we're going to come back uh, and talk a little uh, volleyball, take your calls as well. Uh, but first we're going to talk with uh, John Adius and uh, he'll be live from Tampa, beautiful Tampa, Florida, by the way. I did not check the uh, the weather forecast down there, but uh, I'm sure it's nicer than, than it is here. But we shall see. But it's an exciting time of year. You have women's volleyball going on. You got the Badgers on Civic Media tonight uh, on the men's side. You got the Bucks. We didn't we didn't even get to the Bucks last night. Giannis scoring what 64, 65 points, a record. He broke Michael Red's uh, uh, career. Have you got time to play that cut? All right, here here was Mike. Or here was here was Giannis predicting this a few years ago. If you couldn't make it out, that was from 2021. Giannis meeting Michael Red after a game. They hug, and Giannis says, "One day I'm going to break your record. One day." And last night he did. And he says back to him, "I know you will. I know yeah. you will." It was a very cordial. They were just joking around. It was a cordial thing. But that's another reason I admire Giannis so much is because he's he's a driven. He sets goals. And then he achieves them. I admire anybody in any genre that could do that. The guy that set a lot of goals and achieved them, John Adius, who will join us on the other side. Great broadcaster, voice of Badger Volleyball, and Terry Bell, our news director and volleyball person extraordinaire. Your calls as well. Don't go anywhere. This is the Todd Albal Show, and this is the Civic Media Radio Network. Show on the Civic Media Radio Network. Glad to have you along. Now, 20 past the hour of 1 o'clock, Thursday, December 14th. Mr. Zomer is on the board. And joining me for this final four festivities, our very own news director, Terry Bell, a Wisconsin Badger volleyball season ticket holder, NCAA women's volleyball official. Terry, great to have you on the show. Um, thanks for having me on, Todd. Aaron, good to see you. It, uh, it's nice to talk about something other than news. And one thing that can unify us, I think, are sports and nothing better than women's volleyball right now. It's a very exciting time of year right now. And uh, the Badgers are really establishing themselves as one of the volleyball blue bloods in the nation. Uh, I think this is their sixth Final Four. Right. It's It's been an incredible run, especially under Kelly Sheffield there's there was some great build up uh, to Kelly's arrival over the years but Kelly has just taken it to a completely new level Joining us uh, via the phone live from beautiful Tampa, Florida at the NCAA Final Four, and we're so grateful to have him. A longtime great broadcaster for those in the Madison market and uh, now the voice of Wisconsin women's volleyball play-by-play. You can hear him call the game tonight, and we don't often do this, but we're going to do it anyway. You can hear him on the Madison market at 1070 a.m., uh, the game, and also on the iHeartRadio app. Uh, first serve around 8.30-ish tonight, John Adius, voice of the Badgers. Thanks so much, John, for taking the time to join us. Well, thank you, and thanks for uh, promoting the broadcast. And I will say one last thing about the broadcast real quick, if I could. Yes. About 8.30, we just don't know, which is kind of intriguing for this team because it's technically the match will start 30 minutes after the conclusion of Nebraska and Pittsburgh. So 
we don't know when that's going to be. It could be anywhere from 8 p.m. Central to 9 p.m. Central, which would push it out to close to 10 o'clock, perhaps, out on the East Coast. But, yeah, we're going to go with 8.30. Well, 8.30-ish, right? We'll put the ish on there. Then people just have to yeah. tune in and, yeah, yeah. And, and, and be set to go. Uh, I'm so excited for this. Uh, you, you do it. And, and, again, I want to promote this because, look, we're, we're a, a brotherhood, a fraternity of radio folks here. I still maintain that the best way, whether it's Matt LePay on Badger football and basketball or whether it's you on on Badger volleyball, I just think that people who know the teams, the players who have been there, bring that history and context. There's no better way for me to enjoy a game than via radio. Oh, well, yeah. Well, thank you. And, yeah, I mean, this is, believe it or not, going to be my fifth Final Four. I've been a part of five of the six. The very first one was in the year uh, 2000. But... I mean, the broadcast has all six covered because my radio analyst is Pete Waite. He's the former coach Mm. who led the Badgers to that 2000 Final Four and a national runner-up. So we've got all the Final Fours covered on the broadcast. Uh, John Arias, the voice of the Badger uh, Volleyball, joins us live from Tampa at the Final Four. John, talk to us a little bit. To me, and, and unlike Terry, who's a season ticket holder and is at every game, I, I'm a casual fan. I'm not going to lie and say I, I watch every game. But, boy, I watched that game on Saturday and, you know, against Oregon. It was not just some of the most exciting volleyball. It was some of the most exciting sports that I've seen all year. Uh, talk to us about this team as it has kind of grown and settled into, a, it seems to be, from a casual observer, a very confident place going into the Final Four. Very confident. Kelly Sheffield and the players keep talking about they're playing their best volleyball right now, which, by the way, Coach Sheffield has told me numerous times throughout the last several seasons, that's what they want to do. They want to be peaking in December. It doesn't matter what happens. In, well, I mean, it does, but it doesn't really matter what happens in September, October, November, as long as you're playing your best come tournament time. So uh, several players have said they're playing their best volleyball right now, but they still haven't played their best volleyball. Now, I asked Coach Sheffield, he'll be part of the pre-match show, you know, what does that team look like when you do play your best volleyball? And he said, well, hopefully we'll find out tonight against Texas. But this team has been great since the start of the season. They had, uh, toward the end of the year, a little bit of a hiccup with back-to-back road losses against ranked teams at Penn State, at Purdue, both very extremely difficult places to play in the Big Ten on the road. Also, I think it should be mentioned that they're six foot nine. Uh, right side slash middle blocker. Anna Smrek was not in uniform uh, for those two matches, wasn't available to play because of an upper body injury. But this team is is peaking at the right time. They're the best blocking team in the country, um, and they're almost the best, uh, you know, percentage-wise offensive team in the country. So they've, they've got it all. They've got offense. They've got defense. They've got exciting plays like you talked about on uh, in that match against Oregon on Saturday. Um, there's a couple of dynamic, scrappy hustle plays by the team in that third set, too. Um, that was just one of the you know, most memorable types of plays I think we're going to see in the postseason at the Fieldhouse. But, yeah, they're playing their best volleyball. They've got a fantastic offense, a fantastic defense. But you know what? <laughs> so does Texas. So we'll find out if they can take out the defending champs. Yeah, it was just incredible Saturday night, John Terry Bell here, and and the, the defensive plays in particular last Saturday mm-hmm. night. Errant balls that in any other game probably would have been out and stayed out, and and the Badger players just did some death-defying feats to, to keep that ball in play. Refusal to quit, that's what Coach Sheffield said after the match, and I mean, there was the one where Yulia Ojo, she's the, the libero, who, by the way, is a great story in herself. Mm-hmm. In which she was an offensive attacker. This year they said, hey, we need you to be a defensive player. And so she's excelled at that role and really blossomed. But she, she dives, pops it up, and then Gulje Guchtekin, who was the libero last year, is now a defensive specialist, chased it down right off the end of the court with that, I guess you'd call it a backwards bump, and it it barely gets over the net, does not touch the video board, and then it almost drops for a point. They eventually do get that point against Oregon. Or whether that's Franklin, like, I don't know how she torqued her body and punched the ball up with her right fist near the bench oh. diving, and then Tammy <laughs> comes amazing. over and she'll scoop it up too. I mean, yeah, those are, those are some – and that's what it takes. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's, that's what it's going to take, not only in the postseason, but it's going to take the rest of the – hopefully two more matches. They're going to need plays like that to advance. For sure. And I liked what Kelly Sheffield had to say. He said Oregon made them play that well, that, that they put them in a situation where they had to play that well. And I, I think that's a good mindset when you're going into these, you know, potentially next two matches. There are no more cupcakes left. 
No, no. Every single team you face uh, the next two are going to be powerhouses, and they're all going to have strengths. And the thing that Kelly was telling the team today, too, is uh, unlike, um, you know, teams of the past, perhaps, he's had teams that need a certain path, need to do certain things in order to really, you know, get the percentages to go their way that they're going to win that match. And he told the team today, like, this is one of the few teams that you guys can win a number of different ways. We can win this match. Uh, if things aren't going well in one area, we can step it up in another area. So there's such a balanced, uh, you know, balanced team and every team they're going to face they're, is going to put stress on them. But here's the other thing, you know, Texas has a huge dynamic block, just like the Badgers. I think Texas is third in the country in blocks. Wisconsin's first, but that shouldn't be intimidating to these Wisconsin attackers tonight. Why? Well, because they have to face six foot nine and six foot seven every day at practice. <laughs> so it's you know they face the Texas block you know for three months now basically, um, in facing their own teammates. So yeah, they're going to be challenged in, in many different aspects. Um, whether that's tonight, hopefully, cross your fingers, Sunday as well. Whether they get Nebraska or Pitt. John Audius, uh, voice of the Badger volleyball team. About thirty seconds left here. What's kind of the vibe, the feel down there of the team, and kind of overall? Are there a lot of fans you see on the street. What, what's the vibe in Tampa right now, John? Well, that's really cool. You know, when they landed here on Tuesday night, Tampa did an outstanding job of welcoming them. They had a club team with signs waiting, like on the tarmac for the team. They had a bunch of pirates. <laughs> they had, like, a band. It was. It was. It was, a, it was a great welcome. The fans, you see the fans in, in red. You see some Nebraska fans. You see some Wisconsin fans. You see mm-hmm. some Texas fans. I've seen we're in the same hotel as Pitt. Uh, it's a great vibe. And, and you know, today's kind of a little different. Right. We're going to start, like I John, said. Really. John, we're up against so the clock, the but uh, have, a, have a great right. call tonight, John, on 1070 AM in the Madison Market on iHeartRadio, 830-ish. First serve, John Audius, voice of the Badgers. <laughs> Thanks so much. Have a great call. Back after this on Civic Media. Thank you. You know, it's a, uh, uh, you know, you're, you're super fired up for these guys, you know, and uh, when you go through hard things with other people and then you're able to, to have some success or just nothing that's like it and they've, they've battled through adversity and, and we've got some bigger things in front of us, but, um, you know, we're super excited to, to, to go. I mean, this is, this is a, uh, it's hard, it's hard to do. It's really, really hard to do. And, um, uh, but it's, but it's going to be even harder on Thursday. And, uh, but here, here's what I know is that, uh, they're looking forward to it and they're going to embrace that challenge. That is the head coach of the Badger volleyball team, Kelly Sheffield, talking about tonight's matchup with defending national champion, Texas. Welcome back to the Todd Ball show on civic media. Now, 135, Mr. Zalmers on the board, our very own Terry Bell, Civic Media's news director, but for a half hour at least, our volleyball expert and sports reporter. I will try. <laughs> I will try to live up to that. Oh, my goodness. Well, I think the cool thing, Terry, is, and I think it's just a cool thing, actually, that people hear you at the top and the bottom of every hour. You're a great news guy. You've been in the business a long time. But I, I think it's kind of cool that we kind of allow our listeners a little bit to find out more about us. And again, you're a season ticket holder, a longtime uh, appreciator and fan of, of volleyball, and and also someone who has gone on to be an official in in college uh, volleyball as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But but talking about, uh, just commenting, I guess, on, on Coach Sheffield there, this seems like a guy, Terry. And we talk about people like Luke Fickle being brought in to help get the football program to the next level. You had Greg Gard uh, taking over for Bo Ryan, who who got the basketball program to a Final Four. But it seems like not often enough do we take time to talk about people like Mark Johnson, who's mm-hmm. now won seven national oh, championships yeah. uh, with the with the women's hockey team, mm-hmm. and Kelly Sheffield who has brought a national championship to Wisconsin. Of course, the players have a lot to do with that, <laughs> but through his leadership, yes. a national championship to Wisconsin. And yeah, not only uh, leadership X's and O's, but just the, the the tone that a coach sets for a program. And especially in this day and age of the transfer portal, mm-hmm. where uh, young people can just come and go. And a lot of that has to do with, you know, what kind of uh, atmosphere they think they're in and whether they're in a place that they can succeed. 
And, you know, we lose it one here or there, but by and large, it's other volleyball players from around the country who want to come here. We've poached, if you will, uh, three of the best players in the Big Ten from mm-hmm. recent seasons. Sarah Franklin, Temi Thomas, Ilara, and Carter Booth mm-hmm. uh, from our competition. They, they, they play us, and then they want to come play for us. So <laughs> that's, that's a pretty good position to be in, right? Mm-hmm. I'd say so. Uh, it, it's just amazing. And, and there was a great story this week on BadgerExtra.com talking a little bit about uh, Carolyn Crawford. Yeah. And and that uh, it says here on December 17th, 2021, the day after Wisconsin advanced to the NCAA championship match with a victory over Louisville, uh, Crawford got a quick call from Coach Shelley, uh, Kelly Sheffield. It says Crawford had just entered the transfer portal after completing her second season at her home school at Kansas and already talked to a number of coaches Sheffield's call was short and sweet, she recalls, with him basically wanting to know if she was interested and wanted to talk at length. And it kind of went from there. Mm -hmm. But I I think that awareness of of people and of the game has brought people, to your point, uh, like uh, Carolyn Crawford and others, to to Wisconsin. It's an attractive place, and uh, for a guy who seems to be, you know, Pretty, pretty, uh, pretty uh, grounded and uh, pretty regular guy in a lot of ways. He 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 knows, and the players around the country know that if you want to compete at a high level, if you want not only to play the best teams in the country, but a lot of the other teams, when they have you on their schedule, they bring their game up. Mm-hmm. So everybody's gunning for you, you know, twice a week, uh, all throughout <laughs> the season, and. Players come here because they want to test themselves uh, against that medal, and, mm-hmm. and and Kelly Sheffield has has definitely you know, brought us to this point. Before I go any further, I, I was remiss in coming back out of that last break of yeah. say, thanking uh, John Audius, oh, yeah. voice of uh, the Badgers, uh, again on the radio. Uh, what a great guy. I know mm-hmm. you worked with him uh, at other stops along the way, yes. and I think just a great person from what I can tell, but just so knowledgeable uh, and, a, and a great play-by-play guy. Yeah, and he also handles uh, women's basketball for mm-hmm. the Badgers, and uh, what a great moment uh, for women's sports right now, uh, this year especially. Uh, with the awareness of volleyball, I think is really leading the way uh, for the time being and probably for the foreseeable future. NCAA volleyball is the highest level of the sport mm-hmm. uh, in the United States. States, you'd have to go to Europe to really uh, see some credible professional ball. Mm-hmm. Um, but you have 90 plus thousand people crowd a football stadium in Lincoln, Nebraska earlier yeah. this fall. You have the Badgers themselves and the Marquette uh, Golden Eagles packing Pfizer Forum, setting an indoor record in Milwaukee earlier this fall. Badgers have been part of, I think, of a couple of uh, TV ratings records. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, more people are watching on TV than ever before, and I think that's great because it brings people to the game. I know that, uh, you know, widely up to this point, volleyball has been available like on premium subscription apps, Peacock, that, whatever. I don't know. Yeah. I'm not sure. <laughs> mostly, B, mostly BTN and ESPN Plus. Uh, right. And you pay, you know, $10, $15 a month for the privilege. Um, but that's not going to get the casual fan. That's not going to get, you know, um, Pat Kreitlow was talking about being at a at a tavern in, in northwest Wisconsin. The game was on because mm. it was on ESPN. Yeah. And the people notice. And of people, the casual fan who sees last Saturday's game against Oregon, or maybe the big national championship game between Wisconsin and Nebraska two years ago, mm-hmm. and they see a level of play. You know, I people are always amazed. They always walk away from those games and say, wow, that yeah. was really exciting. Yeah. And that's what I think will help grow the sport is more accessibility on TV. I, I totally agree. I mean, we were up at uh, Shawano visiting my dad and stepmom. My sister, her family was there. Mm-hmm. She has two daughters, my two my two nieces, one in her early 20s, one still in high school. And we were just transfixed watching this game as a family. Yeah. Like, you know, you would a football game, oh, only yeah. it was only it was women's volleyball. And, and it, I think it's just a great thing for young women to see this sport get this kind of recognition. Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, that, that, that these young women on the Badger team are not just great athletes, they're great student athletes and great people. And like, you know, a football player, a hockey or a basketball player, they too could be great role models for young women. And I especially, especially little girls. Um, you know, I was a preschool teacher in a previous stop. And what I really appreciate about Badger volleyball. That. Oh, oh yeah. Wow. Yeah. We'll talk about that right. some other time. <laughs> 
<laughs> but anyway, um, you know, one of the traditions of Wisconsin is kids line the court during the pregame introductions, and the players mm -hmm. uh, come along and 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 low five everybody, and and it's a lot of fun for them. But here you go, you know, tr historically, we all crowd into a stadium and arena to cheer on young men, and there really isn't a role for 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 women that these girls in stands see except for cheerleaders, and yeah. that's great if mm -hmm. if that's your thing. Yeah, but. These are more options. Right. And now here, 7,000 people cram the field house to cheer on these young women. And these girls in the stands see that. Mm -hmm. And it gives them more things to think about and more things to aspire to. Great, great, great observation, Terry. Love it. Uh, if you'd like to call in and uh, have thoughts on the big Final Four game tonight in Tampa or in uh, women's sports in general, 844-967-2789, 844-967-2789. Uh, Two dudes talking about women's sports, but there's nothing <laughs> yeah, wrong about yeah. that. Nothing wrong with that. Um, 844-967-2789. Let's go to the phones. Uh, and Tom, in Florida, Tom, I understand that you're going to the game tonight. Is that correct, Tom? That is correct, Todd. And I wanted to ask Terry for a tip as being a very casual, haven't been to a game, haven't heard a game or seen a game uh, all year. What should I be looking for? What is it that makes the Badgers as good as they are and uh, that I could maybe pick up on when I see the game tonight? Sure thing. Tom, that's a great question, by the way. Well, the, the, the first thing I, I learned from transitioning from a casual fan to a, a more serious fan was watching what they call the transition. This is how mm -hmm. you can tell um, how well a team is playing. That if uh, when you get the ball, that first hit, that's called being on defense. And then you usually pass it to the setter. And the setter is kind of like a point guard in basketball. They set up the person who's going to take the shot. And that's usually one of the players in the front row. If they have a good transition game, if they are what is called in system, uh, they've got it's, it's like controlling the, the line of scrimmage in football. Mm -hmm. And so look for that. I would also look for our front row players for, for the Badgers. Oh, my gosh. I'm going to forget somebody's name. Devin Robinson, uh, Tammy thomas Ilar, Sarah Franklin in particular, Anna mm -hmm. Smrek. The Badgers have one of the best elite blocking games uh, in the country. Uh, these young women are extremely tall and extremely <laughs> athletic. So it's very hard to get a ball over past, you know, the, the, once it gets over the net, it might not get very far if you're playing the Badgers yeah. because they are so tall and, and, and so good. So those are a couple of things I would look for uh, as, a, as a casual fan learning the game. Tom, thanks so much for calling in. Uh, enjoy any. Are you taking the family, or or are you making a day of it? Uh, give us give us the read of the ground down there. I know you'll winter a little bit uh, in the Florida area. Are people talking about the Final Four and about the Badgers in particular? I'll have to get back to you on that. I'm taking one son, and uh, we're looking forward to it. Well, that's great. That's great. Enjoy. Cheer on our Badgers and on Wisconsin. I'm jealous, Tom. <laughs> yeah, we'll give, give us a report tom thank you so much appreciate the phone call from florida one of our badgers going to the final four tonight talking with terry bell our news director here at civic media but for this half hour our badger volleyball expert uh, let's go to steven up in green bay steven thanks for uh listening what say you um i say that any time that the wisconsin badgers get into any type of playoff whether it's basketball volleyball football um it's it's a good thing. Um, it it we're, I mean, you guys have just dedicated over an hour of talking about Wisconsin sports, and I think um, that's great. But not only that, um, people in other uh, areas uh, are also talking about Wisconsin sports, and that gets people um, looking at Wisconsin sports, and I, I think that's very important. Um, one thing that we've we've always you know had in Wisconsin is. Um, great sports teams. I feel like ever since I've been alive, if it's not the football team, it's the volleyball team, it's not the volleyball team, it's the basketball team. Mm -hmm. Someone's in some sort of championship in, in the state of Wisconsin. Um, and uh, it's, it's a great day to be a Badger and uh, on Wisconsin. Hey, thanks so much, David. Great call. Uh, and you're right. And, and, and Terry Bell, 
I mean, Steve is right, and I, but I would be remiss in not also uh, shout outs for the Wisconsin cross country and track teams, which have won multiple national oh, championships. Boy, um, yeah. I mean, just that whole program there. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I know the crew team at Wisconsin, also some of these lesser talked about sports who have been equally or even more successful. But I, I think Steven is right that when you see that motion W and Wisconsin and people talking about our state on national media, that's a good thing for all Wisconsinites, for our economy, and for marketing for the state of Wisconsin. And Stephen's lucky, too, because uh, he must be young enough to only remember right? success. Yes. Um, I'm old enough to remember <laughs> plenty of futility. You and uh, me both, my friend. <laughs> and uh, the point where, you know, they would give, they, they'd stand outside the football stadium giving, literally right. giving tickets away. Uh, <laughs> the Don just, Morton area. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, example. So, you know, this all goes all the way back to, I think, when Donna Shalala got hired to be exactly. chancellor. And exactly. she looked around and says, all right, we need to get football's act together. And you know, she was instrumental in, in, you know, she really twisted Pat Richter's arm. He was happy at Oscar Meyer. He wasn't really yeah. looking to be the AD. And then Barry Alvarez and the rest is history. And yes, and, and that has led us to this point where, as you mentioned, cross country, track and field, women's hockey. Yep. Probably sets the standard right? for seven uh, national championships mm, now under yeah, Mark Johnson. Yeah, and a very exciting, you know, uh, women's basketball Sunday. I was there. The Iowa Hawkeyes were in town mm -hmm. with Caitlin Clark, mm -hmm. and I think it's very exciting that one of the you know most exciting athletes in the country right now is a woman, and mm -hmm. and and that there's no sexism involved uh, when the discussion is talk turns to her greatness yeah. and uh and so it was a good day to be there too a great day to be a badger or mm -hmm. just a uh a fan of, of athletics in, in in particular uh 844-967-2789 if you'd like to join terry bell and myself talking uh, women's volleyball the final four is tonight first serve somewhere around 8 30 ish according to play by play um uh caller john audius depending upon the game that precedes them the evil Nebraska Cornhuskers <laughs> taking taking on uh, uh, Pittsburgh, right? That's right. Uh, uh, all right, very yeah. good. We'll come back, talk more and with that. Take your phone calls as well. 844-967-2789. 844-967-2789. The Todd Ball Show rolls on from high atop State Street with Terry Bell on the Civic Media Ready Network. Welcome back to the Tell All Bolt Show on the Civic Media Radio Network. Polka in with Terry Bell, Civic Media News Director, as we prepare for the final four tonight. It is the Badgers of Wisconsin taking on the Longhorns of Texas. Horns down. <laughs> if you're a Badger fan tonight, yeah, um, that's true. Yeah. and but they're the defending national champions, yes, and so for we got sure. we got to get through that mm -hmm. uh, game time. First serve tonight around eight thirty ish, depending upon the game before them. Yeah. You can see the game on ESPN TV, or better yet, turn over to our friends uh, at iHeart and ten seventy AM. If you're in Madison, John Audius, who was kind enough to stop by this show earlier on the radio call, you can listen to Civic Media though before that. Starting the game, this is this final four is so big, they've moved up the basketball time. 6 p.m. <laughs> tip off for men's Badger basketball. 6 p.m. Matt LaPay on the call on the Badger Radio Network. You can hear it right here on the Civic Media app on Richland Center, Racine Kenosha, Wisconsin Rapids, or Amory, or on the Civic Media app. Just click on one of those stations. Badgers take on Jacksonville State at the Kohl Center, tip off around 6 p.m., and then Badger Volleyball in the Final Four somewhere around 8.30-ish tonight. Terry Bell, thanks so much for joining us again. Oh, yeah. uh, talk about one of these players that she's just, she stands out literally and figuratively. She's <laughs> she's a tall person oh, boy. Uh, and, and powerful, and I love the fact that she has a smile, even when in that game on Saturday against Oregon, even when things might have not always gone the Badgers' way, she's just so positive mm -hmm. and, and just so great. We're talking about Sarah Franklin. She is definitely a fan favorite for all kinds of reasons. If, if, if there wasn't anything to her story other than that she was a really good volleyball player that would even be enough right but um she is such a great person as you mentioned and uh, there's a big part to her story too um is that earlier this summer june i believe um she was starting to notice some symptoms that were starting to get a little scary mm -hmm. um she was losing feeling in her arm 
uh, to the point where her hand was turning purple. Wow. And yeah, so you worry about that. Oh, yeah. She goes to the doctors. Uh, they, they, they check her out. And eventually they come back to her with a diagnosis of something called quadrilateral space syndrome. Okay. <laughs> Which is, yeah, I new one to me. But uh, um, that's basically an, an injury that happens. And I guess it's to a lot of people, the, the motion to uh, hit the ball, I guess, can put you at risk for this. Wow. And uh, blood clots were forming in her arm that were cutting her circulation. Mm -hmm. uh, long story short, uh, among the many options that they were looking at, uh, they, they told her from the beginning, this will possibly... And your volleyball career. Wow. Yeah. And you, you tell a young person, especially someone that young, yeah. that's all they've ever known. You know, their, their whole identity is around that. So sure. not only would it have been bad for the Badgers for very selfish reasons, you know, you, you just think of someone's life. And even more importantly than volleyball career, your life. Right. right. Very scary. Um, but, but she was treated here in Madison, uh, rehabbed successfully, and then went on to have this of season that's so amazing yeah. that she is one of the three front runners to be national player of the year. Crazy. Yeah. And yeah. we got a little, a uh, little clip of her. Yeah. I think this tells, she's talking a little bit about the journey she's been on since June and, and uh, she, she, she just comes across so level headed here. So Aaron, yeah, I think we're looking at uh, cut number five. Sarah Fergus or Sarah, Sarah Franklin, Frank. pardon me. Yep. I mean, I had this conversation with Kelly while while everything was going on, um, and to just be in this situation, I think, is really cool. Um, and I'm just I'm grateful. There's there's no other words to put it. I'm just very grateful that you know all the staff here and everyone at the UW Hospital was able to get me back fully for season. Um, and I think it just makes it even a little sweeter. Not being here um, would have would have torn me apart. And I just think putting all that work in is is just making it a little bit sweeter every time. Yeah, one How far of a drive is that from Ooh. your home to Tampa? About four hours. Four hours? All right. Okay. Wow. <laughs> so, so I didn't know that. So she, she's from Florida. She's a, she's a Floridian. Wow. Yeah, she grew How up. How cool in, is that for her? To get be able to come back and come right? home to do this, yeah, makes that extra cool. I jumped all over that last part of the sound oh, clip, so I apologize for that. <laughs> one but one other thing that really struck me about it, you guys talking about how much of a good sport she is and how excited she is, you could hear the smile that whole Thing. Oh, uh, she just radiates that kind of And the of fact goodness, that she yeah. got treated at UW Hospital mm -hmm. and the great physicians and all the folks there. I mean, that's just... Yeah, lucky to know. be right here in Madison, you right. know, a world-class university and all the, the all the hospitals here that right. are so outstanding. What yeah. else you got for us, uh, Terry? Well, um, I just wanted to talk uh, about a few things. Um, it cut number four, Aaron. Um, Devin Robinson, who has been the star of, of the mm -hmm. team uh, up until now and 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 still is is very, very much a star. Um, but she has been to the final four before. But I think the one thing we haven't touched on is how exciting this is. Even though this is such a dominant team, only about half of this roster has ever been to this point before. Wow. So I think that's uh, – uh, and Devin Robinson just being so selfless and good uh, mm -hmm. is, is just as happy for them as she is for herself. I am so proud of everybody, and it just feels so great to get the people there like Sarah, like mm -hmm. Temi, who have never been in a position like this, to just experience what it's like to be in a Final Four and to hopefully make it all the way, because we're still climbing up. We haven't reached our best volleyball, so we're on our way up. Yeah, I, I just love talk like that. Yeah, uh, you that's know, fantastic. We're not done. We haven't played our best yet. <laughs> uh, the best is still ahead of us. I, you know, get, to get back to Sarah Franklin, you know, I didn't know, you know, I'm, I'm just a fan, mm -hmm. but... Um, a pretty pretty re religious fan, <laughs> yeah. But still, you don't you don't have the inside information right, right. that the coaches and the players do. But um, based only on this, I saw an interview that uh, Sarah Franklin gave to the NCAA uh, a couple days ago, and she just seemed so happy. Yes, but also mm -hmm. calm and at peace and confident. Yeah, yeah. I'm sitting there thinking she knows something. <laughs> she, she knows. Oh, this is a great feeling. Right? How Within good the this team. is going to go. Yeah. yeah. So again, uh, Wisconsin plays the first game of the uh, NCAA Final Four Division One in Tampa tonight. You can see the game on ESPN TV or listen to the call by John Audius locally here in Madison on 1070 AM or on the iHeartRadio app. But before that, we encourage you to check the Civic Media app and listen to the men's basketball game. The Badgers take on Jacksonville State tonight. 
tip-off time for that game, 6 p.m., an hour earlier on the Civic Media app in order to get the volleyball game or people a chance to watch or listen to both men's basketball and volleyball. Terry Bell, our news director, but also a volleyball expert here. Uh, we're after have you come back again because you had about, you know, about 45 seconds for this, but, <laughs> but you actually are so passionate that you've become an official for women's uh, college volleyball. I'm a line judge at the college level, and uh, it's because of I, just getting to know and love the game so much, I was thinking of ways to get involved that, that made sense. And uh, I, long story short, I settled on line judging, and there were opportunities for training this fall. Mm -hmm. And I thought, you know, I've been talking about this for years. It's time to put up or shut up. So, <laughs> so I went and uh, worked a couple of games this fall. And uh, I'm learning more all the time. Hope to work some men's games this spring. Wow. Yeah. Terry Bell, news director, also <laughs> line judge for volleyball and former preschool teacher. The more you know. <laughs> yeah. We're talent. We're lucky to have Terry Bell. We're oh. lucky to have. Thank you very much, Terry. Thanks Thank to John Todd. Audius. Stay tuned. Matt Flynn of Matt Flynn Direct is next. Thank you to Aaron Zomers as well. We'll see you tomorrow. Whatever you're fighting for, keep banging your drum. And on Wisconsin. <laughs>